In this final version of the CRAB tutorial, we want to accomplish three new things. First, we want to end the game if the CRAB manages to catch a certain number of worms. Second, we want to add new worms to the board as time progresses. We want to add these worms randomly. And third, we want to add some animation to the crab so that it looks like its legs are moving while it walks. Let's have a look at how these three features are added now. Recall previously when we created the dog class using BlueJay, we had set a variable called name so that each dog could have its own name. Similarly, in the crab class, we would like to keep track of how many worms that the crab has already eaten. So we're going to add a new instance variable in the crab class. So far, we have not created a constructor for our crab class. Instead, we have counted on the compiler to provide one. But now we're going to explicitly create a constructor. This method will be run each time a new crab is created. And what we're going to do is we're going to set the worms eaten variable to zero. Each time the crab eats a worm, we're going to increase this variable. Now we're going to check to see if the worms that have been eaten equal a certain number. If they do, we're going to stop the game right away. We've defined this variable now called maxworms, which is going to be used to determine the maximum number of worms we're going to allow before the game is stopped. Let's set this variable now. While this private variable, in, which is an integer, keeps track of the worms eaten, we're going to use a constant to define the maximum number of worms. By defining a constant here like this, we can avoid burying the number 4 deep into our code. This is a better way to code in general because it allows us to keep track of our static constants up here early in the code. Furthermore, if this constant is used multiple places in the code, it can be changed in only one place and affect all the others. Notice here that we're using the stop method, which once again is a static method of the Greenfoot class, to stop the program once this record number of worms has been reached. Let's try out this new feature now and see if the game really does come to a stop after the crab eats four worms. And you can see now that the crab is no longer moving, suggesting that the game has now been finished. Let's have a look at this simulation. We've got a single crab and a single worm. But watch what happens as time passes. Can you see that new worms are being added to the board slowly but surely? Let's have a look inside the crab world class to see how this feature was added. In the crab world class, we see this super call which creates a regular world. The 560 and the 560 appear to show the size of the grid that's created for the crab world. And this number 1 suggests that every cell is going to be equal to 1 pixel. Look at this act method that we have added in order to insert the worms randomly. First, we want to make sure that we call the regular act method so that everything that the crab world normally does still gets done. 
but this is the new code that we've added for the adding the worms. You can see that out of every hundred times this act method is called, five percent of the time randomly we're going to add a new worm. And we're going to add it at a random location on the board. We're going to create a random x variable and a random y variable, and we're going to create a new worm. Then we're going to add this worm to the random location on the board. Once again, it's not a good coding practice to take this number 560 and have it inserted in multiple places in the code like this. As we showed earlier, it would be much better to define a single constant up at the top. We'll leave that to you. But right now, this is all the code that's needed to make the worms appear randomly as the game progresses. The final feature we want to add in this tutorial is we want to add a little bit of animation for the crab. To see how we're going to do that, let's right mouse click on the crab class and click on the set image button. We see that in the library there are two different pictures of the crab already available to us called crab.png and crab2.png. Although it may be hard to see on your screen, the positions of the crab's legs are slightly different in the two. So one way we can create some animation for the crab is to constantly switch between these two images each time the crab moves. Let's see how we would do that. First, in the crab class, I'm going to store each of these images as a constant. The next thing I want to do in the act method is to see which image is currently being used and switch to the other image. So in the switch image method, we check the current image and we compare it to image 1. If we're currently on image 1, we switch to image 2. Otherwise, we switch to image 1. This should alternate the images each time the crab acts. Let's see if we get the desired effect now. If I press the act button once, we see that the crab's legs appear to be moving. If I run it at full speed, you can see the crab seems to wiggle its legs as it moves. Let's try it slightly slower. This is the animation that we desire and ends the crab tutorial. Now you're going to be asked to add some enhancements.